Hey, the Hanker family, Pastor Rob here. So good to be with you. I'm having conversations with my dear friends who have some knowledge in this area about loving and really, to be honest with you, the unlovable sometimes. Because we're called in the Bible, of course, to love our neighbor. And not just the ones that we get along with, easy to love, but we're, we're called to love all of our neighbors. So I've invited Ernie, amazing friend. We go back almost 39 years, 38 years, easy for sure. Yeah. Part of the original family here, now at Anchor, but it used to be Hope Chapel. And Ernie has a passion to help those who are addicts to get free, to change their life around. And that's his passion. And that's why I've asked him to come today to help us understand because it might, an addict might be in your family. It might be a part of your neighbor, your workplace, somewhere along the line. But we're called to love them. So Ernie, great to have you with you, with us. Thank you. Great to have you with us. Thank you. And uh, just kind of turn it over to you and say, you know what, how do we love an addict? I'd like to answer that with a couple of stories. A while back, a grandma came to me and she said, Pastor Ernie, can you tell me what I can do with my grandson? And I said, what's the matter? And he, she said, uh, he's, he's using drugs. He lives with me and he's using drugs. And, and there's all kind of people coming in night and day. And, 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 and I, said, I said, Grandma, your grandson is an addict. He's a drug addict. And the best way to deal with him, because you can't fix him, but what you can do is pray for him. And there's something else you can do. You can kick him out of your house. Now that sounds mean, but it's not. Kick him out of your house, change the locks, call the police if he comes back. What? I can't do that to my grandson? I said, well, then he'll stay and do what he does, because that's what addicts do. Addicts lie, and they cheat, and they do everything for themselves. So if you want to do the best thing for him, you would get rid of him, get him out of there, and pray for him. Get him out of there completely. And then pray for him that he would hit bottom as quickly as possible. What does that mean? Well, that gets to the place where he's through with himself. He can't do it himself. His life is unmanageable. And because it's unmanageable, he gives up. Turns his life over to God. Maybe goes to a drug treatment center like Hinamalka or Poilani or one of the other ones. And, and, and does what he has, has to do in order to clean himself up, in order to clean his life up. See, see, Addicts don't do anything to change their lifestyle until they hit bottom. So my prayer is always that so-and-so, whoever he is or she is, would hit bottom. Mm -hmm. Would hit bottom in no uncertain terms. Yeah. What's that second story? Well, the second story is, is much like the first. It, it was a mother, and she had her son of 36, living in one of her units. She had several units. And, and he was living there rent-free. And I said, does he have a job? And she said, no, I, and he's on drugs. I said, well, like I told the grandma, kick him out. And incidentally, she gave him a car, too. I said, take away his car and let him be on his own. Oh, I can't do that, she says. He's my son. I said, I know, but he's not going to reach the end of himself until you give him an opportunity to. Yep. Some of the time, some of the best advice we can give someone is to do the hard thing. And you know what? Some of the best advice I ever got is learn to say no to your kids. Yeah, that's because, right. Because, you know, what we want to do is we want them to be whole again. And we cannot feed their addiction we have to step in. I mean, I remember asking Ernie to speak to a friend of mine in, in a small group setting, and I was thinking he was just going to love on her, and he was very straight with her. And I'm, at first I was taken back by it, but you know what? The story has a happy ending. Yes. She hit bottom. You know what? She got the treatment. And by the way, just for the record, here on the Windward side of Oahu, there's some great treatment here. 
There's, there's help available. I mean, here at Anchor Church, our Celebrate Recovery program, you know, there's the Hope Center, Hina Malka. There are, there are opportunities to make sure that we can get these folks the help they need. But here's what I want to say is we can't look past them. We can't pretend it's not happening in our family. We can't hope it will change. We have to make a difference. Because here's what we can do. We can definitely pray. Prayer makes a huge difference. And I need you to know that. Some, that's not a small thing to do. But don't, don't just stop there. Let's see if we can cause, cha uh, cause change. We have amazing resources in Ernie Hunt and August Orlandis and some of the folks here at Anchor, the Anchor family to make sure that we make a difference in our community, that we love on our community. I mean, Ernie, when we first met, we didn't even know that. You didn't even tell us that you were uh, sure. dealing with those issues yourself. So. I mean, Ernie's walked in these shoes, so when he's helping someone, he can get to the bottom of it. Because the most powerful thing, uh, the most powerful way to minister to someone is be someone that walked in their shoes in the past. No one can do it better than someone who's already been there. They, they, Ernie knows when a person's not telling the truth at him. He, he, he straight out can tell, you, uh, tell them what's going on. So uh, I, want, I want to take the advice of Ernie. How to really love on our people is to be straight with them and let's get them the resources they need to be free from this addiction and be, be, have a whole life again. Maybe reunited with their family, find good employment, all those things. That's loving on them when we really need to step in. So Anchor Family, let's make a difference in our community.